D'abord, bonjour. Mon nom est Patrick Beaupré. Je suis conseiller pédagogique au Récit euh, de Montréal. Ça me fait plaisir avec mes collègues euh, Claudine Jourdain et Daniel Jacques d'animer cette, euh, cet après-cours sur la, la communauté en anglais. Et aujourd'hui, compte tenu des, des demandes qu'on a eues euh, en lien avec l'évaluation, euh, aujourd'hui, on a deux personnes qui sont euh, très près et qui connaissent bien le, le programme et, et c'est des dalles, là, dans le fond, pour le... Euh, je vous présente Mme euh, Frances Brando, qui est, puis euh, rapidement Mme Brando, euh, réda, euh, elle, elle a rédigé des épreuves et fait partie de l'équipe du, du ministère pour euh, à, ALS. Et Mme Annie Lefebvre, responsable du programme et de l'évaluation. Fait que de la manière qu'on va fonctionner aujourd'hui, euh, ça va fonctionner beaucoup en questions-réponses. Donc, vous aviez émis, le, les participants à la dernière rencontre avaient émis beaucoup de, de, de questionnements en lien avec l'évaluation. Donc, on est allé chercher deux personnes qui vont répondre à vos questions. Et oui, pour ceux qui viennent juste d'arriver à la dernière minute, ce que vous pouvez aller faire, s'il vous plaît, c'est aller dans le document collaboratif. Euh, J'ai mis, le, le, si vous allez en haut complètement du clavardage, là, vous allez trouver l'adresse. Et si vous pouviez aller mettre votre, euh, votre présence, votre nom, votre euh, commission scolaire et commission scolaire où vous venez, là, et votre courriel. De cette manière-là, on va être en mesure de pouvoir vous retourner facilement là, euh, des informations quant à l'enregistrement. Alors, peut-être, Madame euh, Brando et Madame le, Lefebvre, vous présenter rapidement puis nous dire. Hello, I'm Fran Brando. I've, uh, I'm a teacher in uh, Commission Scolaire Bos Etchemin. I've been teaching for a long time there, over 30 years. And I've also been working with the Ministry of Education in English Second Language for about eight years now. Bonjour, je m'appelle je Annie Lefebvre, je travaille au ministère de l'Éducation, à la Direction de l'Éducation des adultes. Je suis responsable de programmes et d'évaluation en anglais langue seconde et en English Language Arts. Euh, Aujourd'hui, je suis heureuse de participer à cette rencontre. Euh, j'ai été invitée hier, donc j'ai eu le temps un peu de voir euh, vos propos depuis, euh, depuis l'année dernière et vos interrogations. Euh, Aujourd'hui, je me propose de, de vous euh, montrer quelques ressources qu'on qu a en place déjà. Tenter de répondre à des questions et puis si euh, c'est des questions qui demandent euh, plus de réflexion ou des réponses plus approfondies, euh, on pourra en parler euh, ultérieurement. Oui, de, le document de collaboration restera toujours là aussi pour laisser des traces. Là. Il y a euh, mes collègues, mais tout le monde est en mesure d'écrire dans le document, donc si vous avez vous pourrez les, les, les envoyer ou vous, compte tenu que nous, on anime, là, on a des amis qui font faire ça pour nous très aisément. Donc, écoutez, euh, je commencerai tout de suite par prendre des questions parce que c'est à vous que c'est pour vous qu'on fait cette rencontre-là aujourd'hui. Donc, euh, comme dirait l'autre, on ouvre les lignes. Si vous avez des questions, c'est à vous, euh, vous pouvez nous les poser. Je vous invite à les poser à, à nos invités. Est-ce que... Oui. S'il y en a qui ne viennent pas tout de suite, je peux commencer. Ben, en tout cas, on va voir là, mais sinon, je peux commencer à présenter un peu ce qu'on a fait. Ben, allez-y, commencez par ça. Parce... Allez-y. Alors, ben, depuis quelques années, on fait plusieurs formations. Euh, L'année dernière, on a fait deux formations à Québec, Montréal et Sherbrooke. Tous les documents, je viens de vous envoyer le lien, sont consignés sur le site. Euh, d'accompagnement FGA, de, du Carrefour FGA, en anglais langue seconde. Donc, euh, tous les documents qui ont été présentés à ces rencontres, euh, je sais qu'il y a les instructional grids qui sont très populaires, euh, il y a euh, des, 
vidéo d'interactions orales de vrais adultes qui ont été filmés, qui peuvent être utilisés pour euh, s'approprier les grilles d'évaluation. Euh, il y a des liens vers toutes sortes de sites web. Et puis aussi, il y a aussi euh, une section qui s'appelle FAQs, Foire aux questions, mm -hmm. dans laquelle on a commencé tranquillement à intégrer des questions. Mais là, quand j'ai vu vos documents, je me suis dit qu'on allait répondre aux questions antérieures, justement par ce forum-là. Tout va être centralisé dans ce site web. Est-ce que vous m'entendez bien? Ça, va? Oui, oui. ça se passe bien? Oui, mais okay. quand vous dites que tout va, être, tout va être centralisé sur accompagnement fga.caesl, c'est ça que vous dites? Exact. OK. Donc, je viens de mettre le lien directement dans le, oui, dans fait, le document. Euh, d'un lien que l'on retrouve collaboratif. sur Carrefour FGA, si jamais on ne trouve plus le lien, là, en allant sur Carrefour FGA, tous les documents dans toutes les matières se trouvent là. Ok, on a une question de Mme Abrams. Madame Abrams, vous aviez une question? FGA, vous vous demandez, c'est Formation générale des euh, adultes. Oh oui. Bonjour, vous m'entendez? Oui. oui. Oh, OK. Um, je peux parler en anglais ou oui, non? Oui, tout à fait. Well, OK. Could you explain the difference between the instructional grid and the evaluation grid, please? <laughs> yeah, uh, I will answer that since uh, I, I was the one who created the instructional grids. The, the evaluation grids are the grids that you will see in the exams themselves. And this is the formal grid that you will mark uh, when you're correcting the exam. And this is how you will determine the final mark of your students. We had a lot of teachers who were saying it's not always easy to interpret the grids and we started to have questions about that. And so we decided that we would try to make grids that were in a more, no, in a less formal language and grids that were from the student's point of view. So actually using I statements um, instead of as well speaking passively of the student, we tried to make it more active. And this is something that if you look on the internet, you'll see that there are a lot of uh, places that use these instructional grids. And the intention is that you allow your students to have this during their courses. Uh, basically, the information that is in there is, it is what is in the formal grids in the exam. It's just in a, in a language that is easier to understand. And a lot of teachers who used the grids and marked with them um, were really happy because they, they said it was, it was easier to see where to place the students. So we, we also recommended that you use those grids in uh, learning situations and with your students. And you can also, of course, Um, show the students the actual grids of the exam and compare them if you want. That's it. Daniel? The grid is the one that comes with the exams and the evaluation grid is from the student's point of view or the other way around? No. The evaluation are the formal grids that are okay, in the exams and the instructional because you use it when you are instructing your students so you can think of that uh, when when you are in instruction in the classroom in learning situations uh, use the instructional grids and you will see the difference right away because rather than talking about the student it says I so if there's a statement in the formal evaluation grid that says student speaks fluently uh, in the instructional grid it would say 
I can speak fluently. Perfect. Thank you. Got so it. from the student's Got point it, of Rodin. view. Madame Abrams. Wait. Hello. Oh, yeah, it doesn't. It oh, it works. Yay. Um, with <laughs> with the new exams, you ha I, I would like to explain. I'm from Ontario, so I'm still learning all of the Quebec government rules with exams. With the new exams, are we allowed to show the students' results to them? Yes or no? Annie, do you want to take this or? Like you want uh, the results, yes. The inf the um, evaluation grids also can be shown to the students once they're um, filled out. What go once they've been used? Does that answer your question? But not the exams. Is that correct? No, not the exam itself. You mean the written part? Not the exam itself, no. But hopefully you will show them the grids uh, so that they have an understanding of how they did in that exam. And this will help them to prepare for upcoming exams. Um, or particularly if a student did not pass, it's really important to show them where they had their strengths and weaknesses so that they can they can better work on that. Agreed. Thank you. That answered my question. Yes, I tried to be transparent with their progress. Thanks. Actually, they can be shown the grid from day one or the instructional grid or the, the evaluation grid so they know what's expected of them and it could be used in to support learning all the way through the course. Okay, thank you, merci. Madame Lafontaine. It's more to, uh, to give uh, more uh, information to uh, anyone who might, be uh, who might be watching this. But uh, I know that I've been asked the question uh, before, uh, whether we could, uh, as of whether we could show the students um, their their exams, or as the Ms. Abrams said, the the texts, and uh, basically the the goal here is not to burn these exams. So we want to uh, we want to keep them uh, from you know from all. Of, we want to keep these exams from being burned. So we don't want to show everyone, and that's why we don't want to. The other students to present their uh, their orals in front of the other students. Exactly. Am I right? Yeah. All right. Yes, you're right. Thanks. If I may interject, Monsieur Trottier. This Martin. Yes. I just wanted to say that. Uh, uh, not only are you allowed to show the grids, well, this is for the new exams, but um, you are also back with the uh, the old program, and I suppose it's going to be the same thing with the new program. You'll be allowed to show the students the DDE, les définitions du domaine d'évaluation, because those documents are very important. They should be given at the very uh, start of the course, because they give indications to the students what they're supposed to learn. OK. Monsieur, je, juste un, un petit commentaire, Monsieur Trottier, oh. si vous pouviez un peu baisser le son de votre micro, là, pour... Euh, C'était un petit peu fort, là, on peut voir que vous tombez dans le rouge, là. Fait que... Euh, Est-ce que Madame Brenda ou Madame Lefebvre veut compléter? Of course. Uh, because your courses are based on the program, and, of course, you, you need to be very familiar with the DDE, and of course you need to share that with the students so that they have an understanding right from the very first day that they're in the course, this is what my goal is. And um, 
those are documents that you you have to use with your students so that you're completely transparent with them. They won't have any oh I, I have no idea what to do in the exam if they're if they're almost at the exam and they don't have a clue it's because you didn't give them information that they should have had from the beginning. Thank you very much. Madame Lafont, Madame Abraham. Can I add um, also oui, that yes. uh, oh, oui. I know the ministerial site can take uh, many clicks before you find the document you're looking for, but the documents we were just talking about, the DED, Definition of Evaluation Domains, have also been linked on the uh, ESL site on the FGA, the, the one that I shared with you, Accompagnement FGA ESL. So you can go and look at the, um, it, the header is program information and right under there you have everything that's in link with the program, the DEDs, the courses. Excellent, merci. Euh, Madame, Madame Lafontaine, euh, votre main est encore levée. Est-ce que c'est un oubli de l'enlever ou vous avez en, en, une question? Parfait. Madame Abrams. Hey. Hello again. Um, my question for you about the new program, I feel a bit silly asking this, but uh, we're, we're at our school, we're getting ready to implement uh, Secondary 3. And honestly, besides reading the DED and the program documents for all three levels of Secondary 3, I'm not really sure how else to prepare myself as best as I can for the stage of implementation. I'd like to know your thoughts. Do you want to answer that, Annie, or would you like me to? Oh, I thought you were going to answer it with the document. What? Yes. If you go to the website that Annie is, uh, has shown you, we, we are bit by bit um, answering in an FAQ section and very soon we will have um, the steps that you can use to really try to appropriate okay, the programs. And we understand that it's difficult when you have many different levels. So if you go on there, uh, you will find in the section where we have learning situations, um, we have a large page. And on this page, it's an overview of all of the courses. And I found, uh, for me, what was helpful with that is that you see all of the courses at one time. And it helps you understand the basics of each of these courses. And particularly if you're teaching in multi-level, which almost everyone is now, um, it's easy for you to see how you can introduce activities and learning situations with your students that can respond to many different courses at the same time. And uh, we will be getting out more tools to help you. We're working on them right now, and it shouldn't be very long. But there, there will be something that will show you a step by step, one, two, three. But I would suggest always uh, read the introduction of the courses and the uh, end of course outcomes, because those are the most important factors when you come to teach. That's, that's what you're going to be doing uh, throughout the course, is to aim your students for that goal. And I don't know what else to say. My my uh, my program was pretty marked up when I first used it, and I think that's what you have to do. You just have to study it. You know, that's teacher homework. Also, I would suggest um, to go on Alexandrie FGA. That's another site where there's a lot of learning situations that are available. Also, on the um, Accompagnement FGA, there are some videos to practice evaluation and to um, appropriate the evaluation grids. Also, um, 
go th maybe uh, to the presentations of block one and block two of our, again, uh, site FGA, and those are the trainings that we did last year for uh, DBE. I think those could be uh, interesting documents. And participating in these, uh, sharing and trying out little baby steps, even if you're maybe not implementing right now this year, trying out a learning situation and getting a feel of it in your actual classes now. And uh, I just put the link for uh, Alexa okay. Alexandre Thank you. in the in the chat and in the the, the Google Doc too. So Danielle. Okay. By Terry Karchuk and Francis Brando, if I may. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Okay. I write. Do you hear me now? Okay. What about suggesting your side, the one you built with uh, Terry Charchuk? It's a great thing. Yes. Yes, we, we haven't made... Um, this is a teacher site, actually, that uh, Terry and I have built. Pardon me? I can't hear you, Annie. On vous parle, Madame Lefebvre. Can you share the link that uh, of the website? Yes, I can. Uh, this website, because Terry and I are implementing the reform in all of our courses this fall, it's an experimental uh, course, experimental session that we're doing. And so we built a website so that we could go there and have all of our resources in one place. And um, it's really fun using the website. The students appreciate it. We have different sections in there. And um, you're welcome to use anything that is there at all. That was our intention, is to build really a, a teacher site where you can have everything that you need for teaching in one place. So uh, I'm not quite sure how to, Annie? I'm I'm not yes. sure how to put that up because I have so much. Madame, right now. Uh, Madame Abrams put a link in the in the chat and she asked, "Is it the one?" No. Like anglais, no. FGA, CSDP. Actually, friend, I have it in my computer. Yes. Do you want me to post it? Do you want me yep. to paste it? Yeah. I. There you go. All right, I'll take care of it. Yeah. I'm not a techie. Doing too much at once on the computer, I'm afraid it's going to blow up. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, I don't know who's. The gym. That. The gym do is not the right one, though. No. The, the site that um, that Terry had built for her school for the old courses. But what we have done is for the reform courses, and you have really a lot of information I'll there. Add it. But I'll it add it later on. Bit by bit, we're building it more and more, so uh, eventually you'll have a lot more resources there. There's someone that said that she's going to put it on somewhere, but Okay, it's on the, um, it's already in the Google document. Uh -huh. So that's uh, Terry Char uh, Charchuk, Wixsite.com, stuff like that. That's it. That's it. Yeah, it's done. Okay, well, I, that's in the, in the collaborative document. And you said that the one that Madame Abrams gave us is the one for the old courses? This one is the old so it's okay. It's not right. Okay. Okay. 
Someone else have a question for the ladies? Monsieur Trottier? Alors, je vous pose mes questions. Je vais les poser à la fois en français et en anglais pour que tout le monde puisse bien être au courant. Est-ce que non, mon est micro bon. est trop fort? Okay, parfait. Alors, ma première question concerne ce que j'ai mentionné lors de la dernière rencontre. J'ai fait l'analyse de l'examen du 4101, euh, le premier examen du secondaire 4. Et à, à ma très grande surprise, je réalise qu'il y a beaucoup, beaucoup de lectures. Euh, je regarde le texte écrit et mon analyse me dit qu'il y a, euh, dans tout le texte écrit, il y a à peu près 70% du texte écrit qui est consacré à soit des informations sur le, le profil, sur les directives, sur les grilles et que le reste du 30% du texte écrit, lui, porte sur des textes à, euh, à lire. Ma question va aussi dans le sens qu'il y a je trouve qu'il y a énormément de lectures et je suis surpris de, de voir qu'il y a très peu d'écoutes et je voulais avoir des précisions à savoir pourquoi il y a si peu d'écoutes au niveau de ce cours-là, puisque ce cours-là, le premier cours, euh, le cours de 50 heures, est toujours un cours qui avait comme intention pédagogique de développer les, euh, les habiletés d'écoute et de speaking et que l'évaluation ça devient euh, beaucoup plus du, euh, de la lecture et de l'interaction orale. In English, okay, I had a, a couple of questions, as you all mentioned, um, as you may have read in the, in the script, I um, analyzed the, uh, the test, the very first test, the 4101, and realized that there was something like 70% of the written text in that document that was on either the profiles, the instructions, the grids and everything, and the rest, the remaining 30% was on um, two texts. And I found that there was very little uh, listening uh, for that text. And the first course of each level, the 50-hour course, is supposed to develop the listening and the speaking skills. So I'm asking you, why is there so little listening in the evaluation? Friend, you want to start? Je veux juste dire avant que Fran, euh, before Fran, en tout cas, je ne suis pas en français ou en anglais, là, mais avant que, que Fran commence euh, une, une explication, dans la foire aux questions, euh, il y a plusieurs de ces questions auxquelles on va avoir des réponses écrites qui vont être plus faciles à à analyser parce que c'est des réponses quand même assez complexes. Là. Ou s'il y en a qui sont en anglais ou en français qui sont plus anglophones, ça va être peut-être plus facile de, de le comprendre par écrit lorsqu'on va euh, écrire les, les, les questions-réponses. So, for Madame Abrahams, maybe, uh, we'll be writing these questions in the uh, FAQ section, so you'll be able to go back and Uh, read about the answers that we'll be giving. Because in this kind of form, it's difficult on the spot to answer maybe all the questions and uh, in a in a way that's because it's a multi-dimension question. Fran, you want to go? Uh, one one thing that you have to realize is that. The main part of the exam, okay, when the student is in the exam room, the student has to understand whatever documents are placed in front of him there. And so the job that a student is doing in the exam room is to understand a situation and to be able to take notes and to form some sort of a, a, a response that is based on what he has seen, whether it be 
a, a conversation between people, um, written documents, whatever it is the student has to, this is the comprehension part for the basic situation. So it, the student is put into this situation. When the student is in the room with the teacher and it's time for the oral interaction, this is really where the oral interaction begins because what the student did in the exam room is reinvest understanding of texts. That's basically what that is. Um, whether the text is listening or reading, he takes what he understood from that and then we put him into a situation that is using the information that he has just seen and studied. And the real part of the exam begins when the student is speaking with the teacher. As the teacher is speaking, this is a text as well that the student takes in, interprets, uses the response process, which means that what the teacher has said may change his thinking or not, and then will give a response. So. It, the, the listening part of the oral exams, the most important listening part, is what the student understands from what the teacher says, whether it's questions or comments. And then we see, did this question I asked him or did this comment that I made change his response? Um, did he understand fully what I asked him or the comment that I made, can he give me uh, his point, maybe it's if it's something to do with expressing his point of view, is he able to do that or does he go off track because he doesn't understand the text that I'm giving him. So it's not just the formal text in the exam room. The, the main texts, I would say, with the oral exam are the texts that are during the oral exchange. Any other questions? Is that okay? That's about all I can say right now. It, it when we write it out, it will make a lot more sense. That's for sure. But you have to. <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> it doesn't really if you're, if you're not used to that, because in the past, what we would say to the student is, okay, I'll tell you the forty one one exam. Right now, uh, no forty. 4036, sorry, exam. And we would say to the students, I want you to talk about your favorite season. I want you to tell me why this is your favorite season. What do you do during that season? And then the student would come prepared with a little text. And then we ask him a few questions. But it's all about him. It's, it's, we can't really verify is what he, what he's telling me, is this true? Um, we don't have any basis to know. So what we're basically seeing is how can a student talk? Uh, yes, he does have to answer questions, but it, they aren't questions that will really change his thinking or change what, will, what he will tell us in, in the course of the conversation. Whereas now, it's not just a personal conversation. Now he's put into a situation with parameters and as we are talking with him, he has to take what he knows, okay, what was in the exam room, the new introduction of material or questions or comments that I've, I as a teacher would have made and then he may have to adjust his thinking because of that and we can see whether he understood. So it really is a lot more of an exchange. It's no longer an oral presentation. They're, they're, it's not a presenting. Now it is an exchange, interaction. And that's what we base it on. So the listening there. I can certainly understand the fact that the, the oral interaction has a listening component. But I'm very worried, I'm very concerned for our students, um, for example, the ones that have reading difficulties, because there is so much 
And I repeat, and I want to focus, emphasize so much for reading to do. And we have students with reading difficulties. We have students with attention deficit disorder. So it takes so much time before they're put into action that they will probably give up at some point. And that's the problem. I, I, I find that when they, when they get to the action itself, it, 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 it's taken so much time reading all the, the profiles, reading all the instructions, reading the grids and everything, it's taken a very long time. And that is my, my concern. I think that these students, the ones that we have from the youth sector and the ones that have failed in the youth sector because, because probably they didn't understand or they were not you know, good enough. Uh, they, they, they're here with us. They're not bad students, but we have to, we have to certainly think that you know, they might have a problem reading the text if it's too long, and that's why. So I would have preferred, personally, I would have preferred to have something like maybe more listening incorporated in the, in the exam and a little bit less of, of reading there. Okay, I, I hear you. I hear you, Martin Pierre. I understand what you're saying. Uh, this is why it's so very important that that teachers use learning situations in the classroom. Um, actually, a learning assessment situation, which is similar. It's 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 built up similarly to the exam, um, and you see how your student is able to do that. Uh, you time how your student does with that learning assessment. If they need more than one learning assessment situation, then you give them more than one. Um, it, it's, it's also, a, 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 a how could I say this? It's not just for the student. A paradigm shift in teaching. Absolutely it is. And this is why so much emphasis is being put on learning situations because we want them to be familiar with how the, learn, how the exam is going to be before they walk into the exam room. That's why we're putting emphasis on doing learning situations. And you can make them small. You can give them um, something that, yes, in the exam, they do many different steps. So you can build a whole learning situation around one or two steps that they will see in the exam just to get them familiar with things before you put them into the actual learning assessment situation just before they go into the exam. Okay. But this is not going to, but this is not going to, I understand this, okay, but again, the fact that there is so much reading, as I said, 70% of the exam 4101 is devoted to either the profiles, the instructions, reading what they have to do about the grids and everything. So that's a lot of reading for them. And the actual reading is worth only like 30%. So, you know, and when I look at the profiles, for example, I, I think that there are four or five, the four profiles probably to choose from. I mean, you know that if, for example, We'll probably, um, we'll probably start um, practicing with our students, uh, preparing them for the exam. And I'm afraid at some point, because the profile, if you choose a profile, you cannot go wrong. You cannot be wrong by choosing a profile. I'm afraid that at one point, we'll probably tell the students, our teachers will tell the students, go read profile number one and forget about the three other ones, because it's not really important. You can't fail if, you, if, for example, you only choose one profile, right? Uh, Mark, have, have you tried, um, first of all, are you teaching right now? Are you teaching reform courses to any students? I'm not teaching the new program. I'm teaching certainly the way the reform is supposed to be, okay? But I'm not teaching with a new program. But that has nothing to do with my. Okay, I, I lost you there for a minute, Martin. I, I was just going to say that myself, 
as a teacher, of course, I had a lot of concerns too, because it is a big shift. It's really, really different from what we had in the past. And so what I did, I took uh, one of the learning situations that we have on our uh, on the website now, but this was two years ago when, when, when we first wrote it. And I did it with my class. And actually, my students were able to do in one period, they were able, uh, this was a multi level class, but I had secondary four and five. And so I made it like a class activity. I told them, well, we have a new project and I want to try out something for the first time. And I gave it to them. And yes, they were able to do it with friends and some of the weaker students, you know, work together with other people. And um, at the end of it, they said, wow, it would be really fun if our exams were like this. It's the Joe's car situation. And I told them, well, in the future, this, is, this might be how the exams are made um, because we're going toward that now. And so in my classes so far, I have had three students who have done the exams and uh, the, in, in secondary four. I have not had any students yet in secondary five. But the students in secondary four told me that these exams for them made a lot more sense than the old exams just because um, they had practiced a bit with some of the uh, learning situations. I gave them two individual learning situations. They had one multi-level with all the other students. And then when I gave them the learning assessment situation, um, when they got into the exam, they were already used to, the, to, to to how it worked. And they knew that they didn't have to read all of the information. They basically looked at the profiles, chose the one that they liked. And then using that profile, they knew to take out of the text what went with that profile because they had already done it a few times. And so uh, my students did really well on the exam. There's one that I was a little bit worried about because he gets really, really nervous when he speaks, but he did really well. And um, so far I've had good comments from the students about it, so I'm not worried. Also, I would like to add, I've read the, um, the notes from the last meetings and uh, I noticed that a lot of questions were uh, with what kind of material to use. Uh, the DIAC is working, the DIAC is the direction I work for, is uh, working with school boards and with uh, resources from Alexandrie to build a grid to evaluate, uh, excuse me, <coughs> to evaluate materials to be used. So I'm noticing you're mentioning, <coughs> excuse me, Ça sera coupé au montage. Excuse me. No problem. I am noticing that some people are wondering what to use as materials. Um, we're building a grid to evaluate the materials that are the most <coughs> in line with the, the new programs. I know connecting doors have been making learning situations. I know there's a, a lot available out there um, on Alexandrie, so I'm encouraging you to try some learning situations with your students. And uh, slowly taking the change. Mm -hmm. And I believe from what I've been hearing, sorry, <laughs> choking to death, <coughs> that um, in using situations, of course, if your students have not been interacting or been uh, evaluated for learning using these kinds of situations, they might be uh, they might be surprised by what they're getting into. But if they've been taught 
to deal with these kinds of situations, I believe uh, they'll be able to to succeed. Je vais, on va vous donner une pause, Madame Le Pen, pour reprendre, <rire> pour, pour reprendre votre voix. Là. Euh, il y avait Daniel, Monsieur Trottier, ça répond à votre question. Euh, il, y a, il y a Daniel Jacques qui a la main levée et j'ai aussi remarqué que Madame Lafontaine nous publie plusieurs bons commentaires dans le, dans le clavardage. Donc, Madame Lafontaine, après euh, Madame Jacques et Madame Abraham, si vous voulez euh, intervenir, ben, sentez-vous libre. Donc, Daniel? C'était justement le but de mon intervention. I just wanted to mention that uh, Sylvie and Laurie have been writing a lot in the chat and it is very interesting. So, instead of reading what they wrote, I would like them mm -hmm. both to take a turn and speak out, please. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, Madame Abrams, and maybe after uh, Madame Lafontaine. Madame Abrams. Yes, hello. Hello? Oui. Oh, um, yes, my question for the oral interaction, um, this is a question for anybody. When would you recommend uh, that we do this? Like I have the multi-level classroom and I'm looking at the logistics, like would you do that in class one-on-one -on -one with the student or? Um, presently, me. Do you want to answer that? Or? Yeah. Answer that or? Okay. I'm sorry, my phone is ringing there. I'll just, uh, I have a multi-level class as well. And I can give you um, an idea of something that I did this morning because I, I told them you have to learn how to use ang language functions no matter which level you're in. And so it was a short uh, learning situation that actually uh, Terry had done and I totally used it. And I told the students, I, I gave students ideas on how to express. And so um, it's how to use emotions and express your, your, your emotions, your feelings. And um, I told them, I want you to find your favorite picture of the new president of the United States. And I want you to express not your opinion. I wanted them to express their feelings. How do you feel about him being the new president of the United States? And I was blown away, actually, by, uh, by what they told me. And a lot of students um, really felt very passionately about it. And because it was one-on-one -on -one with me, they showed me his picture on their phone, on their iPad, on the computer, whatever. And, uh, and I told them, I don't want to hear any more than five sentences. And it was really interesting because everyone did it and they wanted to purchase. Oh, Madame France, I'm ready, you know? And um, it, it was really fun. And I think that if you start communicating right from day one, just in small ways, you know, um, with some of the secondary twos that I've had in the past, they're really reluctant to, to talk. And so I, I give them an assignment. I want you, when you come into the class from now on, to tell me hello, ask me how I'm doing, I'll do the same with you. And bit by bit, it, it's just one on one with teachers and other students will also step in. They'll help each other to talk. So. Also, if I might add, I know um, another of our of our team members um, is using a platform, a web platform that's called Seesaw, and she's had she's made um, like a quiet corner in her class, a more private corner, or students can do it um, from their house or from wherever they want. They record themselves doing uh, interactions or doing oral uh, presentations, uh, practicing their oral, and then they send it to uh, the teachers so she can start 
evaluating recorded uh, presentations uh, or interactions or convincing, persuading. So there's a technology that can be used also to, to practice. There's also multi-level situations that are on the Acopagma website. Maybe, Fran, you can talk about suppose, the restaurant situation or the, the um, going just to the a, borders. Yeah, just a little, uh, a little question. Uh, what is the, 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 the website that you're talking about? Is CISA, S-E-E-S-A-W? And okay. um, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to learn how to use it. I bombed totally with my students last week because I went in and I, I thought that I knew what to do, but I didn't know what to do. So I told them, you've got to give me another week or so. Um, but uh, the, the way that Terry is using it is really fun and really exciting. And um, it gives her so much more time because she can listen a couple of times to the student and then say, hey, you express really well, but when you go to give your opinion, it's pretty weak. And just, you know, bit by bit, she's getting them used to talking. Um, but it is C-S-E-E-S-A-W, and you can put as much information on that website as you want. There isn't a limit. And students can, uh, they can write things in, they can send pictures, they can uh, record things, make videos. Um, yeah. If you go on the website that we shared, that's called terrycharchuk.wixsite. If you go onto that link, there's some uh, anglais. Uh, how do you say some? Uh, you have to some tabs, and you on the teacher tab you click onto Terry's class and then you'll have the CESA application, the Quizlet application, the Duolingo mm -hmm. applications that she uses. Those are ways to encourage interaction. I put the link from CESA in the, in the chat so you, will, you can just click on it and uh, go to see it. Webcesa.me Okay. Um, juste avant de revenir à M. Trotti, est-ce que Mme Lafontaine veut intervenir? Parce qu'effectivement, Mme Lafontaine nous a mis plusieurs choses intéressantes. Là. She said a, a lot of interesting in the, in the chat. So, do you want to... Uh... Talk to us? Well, sure. Uh... Basically, uh, since I've started, well, uh, I've tried to follow our friend, our friend Fran, uh, in this wonderful path. And uh, basically, you know, what I've, what I've seen and what I've experienced is all positive. My students just want to try these new books. They just want to try these new projects, because it's true that you know a book is is something. Is something nice to use and sometimes it saves a lot of time but you know sometimes it's it's just a mean it's just a mean uh, for the student to go through the program and a uh, friend and I feel strongly about this I think we have the same vision and I gotta say that you know just this new program is is so is so positive for the students and this new way to evaluate their knowledge and what they can actually do with this second language, you know, is is just so much more than what we used to have. Because um, this new program allows the students to really try new things and really try to express themselves. And they are experiencing um, in context activities. And just that, I think, is so positive and so different than what we used to have and what we used to do. <laughs> I knew you would agree with me. <laughs> uh, and and sometimes it gives it gives the the teachers motivation to to try new things and new projects as well. Uh, just with uh, with the the other teachers who are <laughs> working in my school, I can see that 
they're really they're really so happy to to talk about these new ideas and they just want to to see you know what they can do with this and as i i'm telling them all the time there's sky is the limit there's no there's no limit to what you can do with this new program you know you are your own limit <laughs> and that's pretty much what i have to say about it thank like you very much say, because because the new program is built on competencies and language functions it's so easy to create something that multi-level students can do together and um you, you, you're not stuck with a theme you're not stuck with you know oh they have this topic here and that theme there you create your own thing actually the students sometimes create themes they say hey you know uh, we should try this and a couple of times I've just said yeah let's let's run with that so it's 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 really good because we're not stuck in topics and themes anymore makes a difference you know you know we 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 talked about you know following the program and and you know having the strength to put the books aside sometimes and uh, I know, friend, you're, you're experiencing extremely nice activities in your school. And um, personally, uh, yesterday, I, I did, I just told my students, OK, guys, uh, push the books um, away and uh, we'll do a speed dating activity with the Francisation group. Mm -hmm. And then yeah it's true and uh, basically i i just asked the beginners uh who are trying to learn french to come to my class and basically i told them okay we're gonna do 45 minutes of english and then the rest could be in french if you want to practice your french and they were thrilled and basically what i said is that okay you you have to talk about food because that's the theme we have practiced so far so you can you know share your favorite recipes you can basically sky is the limit but talk about food in english and we we did not get a chance to film it but we we did film the 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 the, the activity we tried uh the week before so i'll be happy to i'd be happy to share it with you guys if if you're interested but i'm telling you just you know try new things and just have your students uh, do a specific task that's got something to do with the program, and that's all you need. They will be so happy to try new things. Écoutez, si vous voulez nous envoyer, c'est if you want to send uh, some material to 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 everyone, you can send it to me, and I'm gonna put it on the the, the collaborative document to, uh, the, and everybody will be able to uh, to look at it. Uh, Daniel said to us that we're running out of time. It's déjà 14h34. Um, maybe I can we can ra wrap this. If you have I other questions, please go on to the FAQ section and you can write them in and we'll answer them uh, on the website so everybody can. Uh, Profite, can, uh, can, uh, can uh, use the information. It will be on the, again, uh, accompagnement ESL. And uh, I'll make a point of being here next time also. And there's also the Moodle FGA. There's a, 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 an English community on it where people can uh, ask questions and other teachers can uh, answer to those questions. So uh, that, that's a place to, to co-working, co-worked, pardon, uh, together. Um, I think, peut-être, Monsieur Trotti, si vous avez-vous une question? Madame Lafontaine, avez-vous, OK, avez-vous mis votre, votre nom dans le document collaboratif? Yes, I did. Excellent. Thank you very much. So. That's it. Um, okay, so uh, I think it's going to be uh, all for for today. 
Um, thank you very much to uh, Madame Brando and Madame Lefebvre. Merci beaucoup d'avoir participé. Peut-être qu'on pourra faire uh, une deuxième rencontre uh, une autre fois sur un autre sujet ou sur le même sujet, parce qu'il reste y avoir encore des questions, puis on pourra repartir.